Hi, today I'm going to do a quick biochemistry post. The first compound is called astaxanthine. Now astaxanthine is an antioxidant and its job is to react with and mop up free radicals. In nature it occurs in salmon and in algae and I'll tell you what it does in a moment. So a free radical is effectively something like a, it's like a molecular razor. So it's a, a molecule that's got an unpaired electron and that electron wants to go around and react with cells and cell membranes. But for the lay person, we'll say it's a molecular razor. Antioxidants uh, react with these um, free radicals and neutralize them and stop them getting out of control in the body because you do need some free radicals for your immune system to function properly. Vitamin E and vitamin C are also uh, antioxidants, but astaxanthine is more powerful than those. There's a special uh, score which you can give antioxidants. And when I worked as a biochemist, I used to use astaxanthine with my, in my experiments, because I used to work with very expensive dyes that were very sensitive to free radicals. So I had to add astaxanthine and other things to the solution to stop the dyes becoming damaged. Now for salmon, in their muscles, they um, have mitochondria as we do and the salmon as you know has to travel long distances and jump up um, sort of waterfalls and all sorts to, to mate and if it didn't have astaxanthine in its mitochondria and muscles the amount of oxidative stress or the amount of free radicals produced would damage the, the muscles and the salmon so that's why salmon have astaxanthine in them that's why they've got their that pink colour the other um, natural source of astaxanthine is in red algae and they use it as a natural sunscreen or um, to protect themselves from UV light uh, from the sun when the water gets quite shallow. It, in people, if you take it, you not only get the antioxidant benefit, you also um, sometimes can get some skin bronzing if you take it for a while because in the same way as the algae are red, I think some of the astaxanthine actually deposits underneath the skin, so it might act as a sunscreen in people as well. That's not proven, that's just an observation from taking it. Now, I don't sell supplements or anything, so you can look for your own brand for this if, you, if you're interested. The other um, compound of interest is called vitamin B3. Most people have heard of this, or niacin is its proper name. The one I've got here is the um, the flush version of niacin. So when you take it, it makes you have a little flush. And that one has more benefits for the circulation, circulatory system in the body. Also, vitamin B3 is very important for, for making serotonin. And vitamin B3, the flush version, also lowers LDL cholesterol, uh, which I don't want to say the bad cholesterol, but it's the cholesterol that you don't want to let the reading get too high. The final uh, compound is called Thunder God Root, and I don't know the name of the compound in here because there are many, it's an extract from a root. So this has been used in Chinese medicine for a very long time. It has um, research proven benefits for, I think it's rheumatoid arthritis, but also other kinds of autoimmune based inflammatory conditions. Uh, also, it can help manage um, people's weight because some people have found it helps to stabilize blood sugar which is really important for mood, food cravings and insulin sensitivity or resistance. And finally Thunder God Root also improves leptin sensitivity so if you become insensitive to your own leptin which is a hunger hormone even though you're not physically hungry if you're not if your brain isn't listening to the to your leptin it'll think you're still hungry so it'll make you eat when you're, not, when you're not hungry, and so many people will um, completely understand that feeling. Uh, not everybody's uh, leptin insensitive, but people who are, this can really help with appetite control, and there's been some several research studies stating this to be true. Just a brief um, in, uh, well explanation of, of leptin, a way you might have heard of it. About, I think, 10 or 15 years ago, when the scientists discovered the leptin gene, they made a mouse with a problem in its leptin, so its body didn't listen to the, the hunger signals. And that was when there was lots of pictures of a really fat mouse that looked like a furry tennis ball with a thin mouse beside it. And the scientists got really excited because they thought, oh great, we've solved the obesity problem. But they found that a real fault in the leptin gene in a human is extremely rare. It's usually people's um, bodies are not responding or listening to their own leptin. 
and this is a, a this a route can help with with uh, uh, that sort of communication system in the body for some people. So again, do your own research if you're interested in any of these to make sure you buy one that suits your location, budget, and interest. So thank you very much for listening. Bye.